All right, hey there, we're back again. So today I'm gonna to show you just a few things. Um, first, I'm gonna show you how to properly light a Bunsen burner. I'm gonna also show you how to finish pouring those nutrient agar plates. So first things first, if we're dealing with anything that we wanna keep sterile or any type of chemical, we always wanna wear gloves. And then we also wanna wear goggles. So for this, we're gonna be using Bunsen burner. We're also using liquid nutrient broth. Um, so we'll wanna make sure we always have goggles on, That'd be safe. All right, so this is called a striker. Um, we're gonna be using this to light our Bunsen burner. Basically what it does, it's got a little piece of flint and when you click it, it basically makes a spark. So to do this, there's a couple different ways. Uh, we're gonna be using the striker. So with this, we always wanna make sure that our gas valve is turned on the proper way. So with the gas valve, this is the flow of gas and it's gonna go through this gas line here and then into our Bunsen burner. If it's going perpendicular, that means it's closed. If it's going with the flow of the, the tube, that means gas is flowing through, it's in line, it's on. So if we turn this, gas is gonna be flowing through here. Now we don't want gas to be flowing through here and just going out into the open space, uh, that would be bad. So we want, always wanna make sure that we have our, um, our striker or if we're using a, a, a just a general lighter, that we always have that ready to go. Now, if I was using a lighter, I would light here first, and then I would turn this on. Since I'm doing the striker, I kind of want to make sure I maintain at least a couple good strikes around the time that I'm turning that on. And you don't want gas to sort of fill up the room before you've actually allowed it a chance to light. So we're going to go ahead and get the striker. You also want to make sure that you're not reaching around or over. Um, this flame will be very hot, and it will also look kind of invisible. So you never want to reach over. You always want your whatever supply is going to be along the sides or in front of the Bunsen burner. I never, ever, ever want to have to reach over my flame either to turn on or off. And again, I'm kind of off to the side here, but to turn it on or off, you always want to make sure you're off to the side and not reaching right over. All right, so I'm going to get my striker going, turn on my gas, and you can kind of hear it. And see, now it's lit. You can barely see it. You can kind of hear it more than see it. I'm gonna turn down the pull gas just a little bit. And notice my hair is pulled back. I don't have any loose clothing on. And then you're going to close this so that you have a nice blue flame. You don't want, I'll show you kind of like what a red flame looks like here. One second, I kind of make sure that this is on here tight. So this, where you can kind of see like little bits of red every once in a while, that's not the kind of flame you want. You want a nice solid blue flame. And that usually means that there's a good amount of air getting through here. So that's a good flame. If you have really good lighting, you could see that there's actually a blue kind of like triangle in here. That's where the heat of this flame is, right? Just above that. So everything above, super hot. You never want to lean over. So what we're going to be doing today is I have some sterile Petri dishes. And these I just opened. I have not... I've opened the bag. I've not actually opened these petri dishes. So these are sterilized upon shipment, meaning that there's no bacterial contaminants in them. So I don't want to be over here away from the Bunsen burner and open these up because there's bacteria just kind of floating around. And if it gets in here and we add what we call nutrient agar or nutrient broth, this thing is going to grow like crazy. There's going to be all kinds of bacteria growing. We don't want that. So what we want to do today is just pour a couple of nutrient agar plates. So I'm gonna kind of take the camera down so you can see what I'm doing on the bench here. So I have my water bath, and in that water bath, I've had some of this nutrient agar broth, and now it's mostly melted. We actually want it to have, be 100% melted. I'm just giving it kind of a little bit of a, a stir. It's melted enough that we can pour it, I think. We'll find out, I actually probably would let this go a little longer, but for demo purposes, I'm gonna use it as is. Now within, a good foot or so of this Bunsen burner is sort of our sterile area. Okay, so we've got high pressure here pushing out the air. So things are not gonna be floating into this area. So I'm going to make sure that every, all the work that I do is within this area here. So here I've got my agar. Um, when you open these Petri dishes, you don't wanna just open them flat and just leave them there. Cause again, there's things kind of floating around. And even when you're within this space, it's always good to just practice good techniques. So I'm going to, within this space here, take off the lid here. And then I'm going to pour in one direction. We'll do a little 
well, this is a little bit warm still. I probably am pouring this a little too soon. So I usually would wait for this to cool a little bit more, but we'll, I'll just show you for, for demo purposes. So we're literally just going to pour and what we want to do is, since I had that cap on here and I just kind of unscrewed it, it's possible a little bacteria landed on the top of this. So we actually just want to, without hitting the paper, we want to just kind of pass that through the flame just a couple of times. So we want to make sure that as we're pouring this, we're not accidentally in using a bunch of bacteria. And then we're just going to pour this. Now this is actually a little bit, this isn't quite as, um, this isn't quite as liquidy as I'd like. There's, a, there's some uh, agar that's not fully melted. For our purposes today, it'll be fine, but typically I would let this melt a little bit longer. Okay, and then when I want to put the lid back on, you just pass it through the flame one more time and put the lid on. You never want to put the lid down flat on the ground. If it's possible, it's best to kind of hold it in your hand upside down so that, again, anything falling onto it won't have a chance to because you're looking at the lid. If I do it like this, or even if I put it on the bench like that, it's okay if you are sort of limited in how many hands you got or helpers. Um, but ideally, it's always good to just kind of hold it upside down so that if something falls on it, it's not going to uh, get into the part that's inside where the nutrient agar is. So I'm just going to close this back up, put it off to the side. And then my plate is ready to go. It's just going to cool for a little bit. You might want to just make sure that it's covering all the part of the plate. And it's just going to cool. It might take about 30 minutes or so to cool. And then we'll be able to spread it with some uh, bacterial uh, cultures. And I'll show you how to do that next. We'll be using an agar slant and inoculating this plate with our bacteria. Now to turn off this gas, you never wanna blow it out like a birthday candle. Again, there's gas flowing no matter what if it's lit or not. So we don't want there ever to be gas flowing without this being lit already. So I'm just going to, again, reaching around, not over, just slowly turn this off. And then you'll hear and you'll be able to see that it has stopped. We always want to double check that that's closed and we actually have an additional valve that we will use to shut off the gas to make sure it doesn't accidentally stay open. All right, so that's it. We've just poured our first agar plate and we've used the Bunsen burner for the first time. So hopefully as we get more and more into this year, you'll have a little bit more practice with this and we'll be able to actually do it in real person. Thanks.